to episode 146 of the Concealed Taco Dudes podcast. Woo-hoo-hoo. So we have me, Jason, with Concealment Solutions. Me, Taco. Who's just a taco. I'm just a taco. <laughs> a guy who likes tacos and guns. Yes. Who doesn't? Yeah. But we're in a new place, so the sound might be a little different because we've never recorded here. <clears throat> this is this is the new Concealment Solutions office. Yes. <laughs> slash studio. <laughs> slash shop. So we're, we're testing this out for another lunch. Lunchtime episode. Lunchtime episode. So anyway. Let's go ahead and hit some sponsors real fast. Okay. NOE okay. Bullet Molds. NOEBulletMolds.com. Yep. Makers of the finest bullet molds around, and hopefully you guys were able to take advantage of the yeah. if you stackable discounts. Cash during... in on that, you missed out. Yes, so that was awesome. Also have Utah Air Guns at UtahAirGuns.com. The anything you could want in the air gun world, they've got it, and they've got a knowledgeable staff that can help you find what you need. Yep. What's best for you? Did we give the coupon code? Oh, for... we didn't. Okay, coupon code for. NOE would be FLT001, and it will save you 10%. Yep, and the coupon code for Utah Air Guns is Air Candy, and that'll sh- give you free shipping and free turret stickers. Awesome. We also have Black Ice Coating at blackicecoatings.com. If you're building a custom AR, say, or if you're doing a Polymer 80 build or something like that, you need to take it to the next level. Yeah, you don't want to look like everybody else's black, plain black AR-15. Right. Yeah. You want a little bit more pizzazz. Yeah. And if it's gonna, if it's gotta be black, then it's gotta be Teflon. Yeah, Teflon black. But check out Black Ice Coatings, call them up, tell them you want your slickery. And he'll give you a wink and a nod. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky. And then we have uh, Magholder, magholder.com. I still haven't heard if the 45 double stacks are 10 millimeter double stacks yeah. are shipping yet. Yeah. But He'll let us know when they do. I'm sure he will. But uh, go check them out at magholder.com. Uh, use the code. Get in the van, Get, I have candy. The original <laughs> The candy original code. candy code. Get in the van, I have candy. It'll save you a little over 20%, I believe. Yeah. And then last but not least, Concealment Solutions at concealmentsolutions.com. We are your one-stop holster shop. In fact, when you order from us, you get it your way. So we're like Burger King without the diabetes and (laughs) heart failure. (laughs) And the creepy commercials. And the creepy commercials. There's no dude in a a king outfit staring at you from behind a bush. None of that. But, uh, yeah, custom stuff all day long. If you can't find what you're looking for... Shoot me an email or something, and uh, I will help take care of you as best I can. But uh, yeah, we we do lots of lots of unusual and custom fits. So lights, yeah. lasers, all that business. Jason's going to be building a custom high point holster. Yes, I am. Coming out for I, a customer. I am, and I'm excited to do it. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Let's move on. You go first, if you haven't died. Yeah, because I have, I have not. I have been, I had a sale. I'm still digging out from the sale. And yeah, I've been coming in early and staying late in the shop. All right. That's okay, because I have enough for, <laughs> for both, both, both of us. us. Oh, okay. Correct. So on the ground over here, yes. too bad you guys can't see it, but I will, I am hoping to do a video on this gun and kind of like a comparison video between uh-huh. the old and new, uh-huh. but I have one of the new stainless steel Ruger Marlins. Yeah. And Ruger hit it out of the park with this one. Yeah. As far as looks and fit and It looks finish. fantastic. Yes. I mean, that is a... It, it's a 16-inch barrel... The, yeah, this is a, a lever special gun. one because it's got a 16-inch barrel. I've not seen... And a, and a, a fluted um, receiver. So, I yeah, mean, well, not receiver. The, the, the bolt, bolt is yes, the fluted bolt. On, on... Yeah, it's... I put my fingernail in the action to, like, check for tooling marks. It's, uh-huh. it's polished pretty smooth. Yeah. Yeah, like the Marlins, some of the Remlins or Marlingtons. <laughs> you know, if you put your finger in there, you could you could feel all the tooling marks yeah. inside the action. This one 
has some nice beveling on the edges and the stock fits quite well. I mean, overall... That's a laminated wood stock, correct? Yes, yeah. correct. In, in kind it of is threaded. It is threaded. black. The, the one thing right off the bat that I would have changed uh -huh. is to thread it not 11... What was it? 11 16 or something like that. Yeah. I would have done it 5 8 Yeah. Just so it's compatible with everything else. And But yeah, yeah it's, so it has a weird barrel threading, but I happen to have picked up a thread adapter in that back when a, a shop was going out of business and I bought mm. all their weird uh. threadings, <laughs> thread adapters for the Silencer Co. hybrid because oh. I figured at some point I might end up getting something and needing it and you, but they were like they were like 90 percent off or something i got these thread oh, adapters nice. for like 15 bucks instead of like you know nice yeah 75 bucks or whatever they are well whoever was heading up this project with ruger it was not holding back and it would have been easy for for ruger to to pick up the marlin name and the brand and just kind of i mean honestly they could have just produced mediocre stuff and it would have been it would have been an improvement on what was yeah already they, out I think, there i think marlin slash remington mm -hmm. they they kind of figured it out towards the end but even at the end there was some q uh quality control stuff that yeah. slipped through like my friend's marlin dark uh -huh. the tube was bent slightly so the follower would get stuck Oh, nice. And yeah, so then the rounds would be shaking around See, that's, inside that just the, the magazine happen. tube. Yeah, that kind of stuff should not happen. And it did happen with Marlin Remi Remington. Yeah. You know. Well, I, I think I think Ruger had a game plan going into this where they were like, we're not just going to make, you know, we're not we just going to do this right because. I think they I think they went beyond right. Yeah, I I think they went above and beyond what they really needed to do in order to kind of salvage the brand and the mm -hmm. name. I think they've gone beyond, and I think what they're doing is really really incredible. Yeah, I think so. And this one is like I said, it was it's the 16 inch model. Yeah. I so now I guess I have a 16 inch 4570. Yeah. 18 whatever the 1895 sbl is and then yeah. the long octagon barrel 1895 cowboy yeah so it's it's kind of kind of fun a cool one to add to the collection i need we need to take this out yeah. and just blast some jugs with it i've got yeah. lots of 4570 ammo loaded what are do you have any plans for modifications to this or are you just going to run it as is I'm gonna run it as is. It does have the Skinner Trapper sight, I guess, on the on the rear, uh -huh. and that is like it's got a a, a peep it's sight. A peep sight, yeah. But I'm probably gonna unscrew the peep and make it a ghost ring. Oh, okay. Kind of, so it's set up similar to my it's a little faster. 1895 SBL. Yeah. But maybe not too. So I can. It does swivel the rear sight. The ghost ring sight kind mm. of swivels back and forth. It's it, the set screw is not tightened yet, mm. so I would like to take it out, uh, sight it in, maybe like a hundred yards, maybe like eighty yards, yeah. know, something like that. And then you know, because with iron sights, I'm not going to be shooting a sixteen inch forty five seventy at like really far distances. Right, just not right. not what this one would be for. And you have others that will do. I that. do have, <laughs> yeah, I, I have a ladder sight on my. Uh, 1895 cowboy right. so i can really stretch that out to to lob lead in nice. but yeah so i need to sight this in and then tighten the set screw and, and yeah get it ready but overall super pleased with it if yeah. people are wondering wondering i, I know they're pretty much they, they get a couple in at the shops and they sell them out oh yeah i, I haven't heard anything bad about them yet i talked to wyatt yeah and he was kind of complaining about the way you know they were selling them uh -huh. uh, in order to get these you know two of these new ruger marlins and uh -huh. he had to buy some of the kind of like <laughs> the, the less desirable the less desirable yeah what is the ruger handgun which one and just the newer one that's like kind of like everything else oh there's like the max nine and yeah so like he had that. to order some of those types of guns in, uh. or, in order to get these ones uh. so that is uh, smart marketing on Ruger's end. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're yeah. not moving many of these, but so, these are flying hey, out the door. So. <laughs> yeah. 
but you know he get, they were priced not as cheap as everything was before but you know about 1200 bucks or just over 1200 bucks okay for this one and it's in stainless like i said and threaded so yeah I uh, this one I'm I'm currently at like net nine guns. <laughs> so I, you only have a couple months to get things I, I in know line. January <laughs> yeah that's the end of December so I gotta I gotta get rid of a, a couple things I have been selling a couple things yeah to try and get back down because I went on that Palmetto spree right where I got the the dagger and the. Uh, what was it? I don't even remember. Yeah, was, There's a handful of there stuff. There quite a few. <laughs> the, I got their AK-556. Yeah. So that's their 223 uh, 5.56 right. AK-47. Right. That takes um, AR mags. Yeah. So I tested that out. I It was kind of a busy day. It was that day I went shooting for like eight hours eight with Stan hours, and yeah. a couple buddies. So I can't remember if I had any failures to feed at all. But uh, I remember everything working pretty good. Yeah. But this is one I need to take out. So another gun I have, or I brought for this episode, <laughs> is it is now we talked about the one Walther twenty two that the was space this, space this kind gun of space gun looking thing as <laughs> yeah. the target model. Yeah, so, which I kind of I kind of poo pooed its aesthetics. Yeah, but it was kind of cool because it was but, but now unique I'll, and different. Yeah. Now I want one. Now you want one. Because of your story. Yeah, so <laughs> I got an update to that story. Yeah, so. let's hear it. So th for, for the people who are just joining, it originally started with a gun that I bought a, from a pawn shop. Yes. And then due to some <sighs> family, family circumstances, circumstances yeah. of people arguing who really they owned the gun, deserved to have that gun. Yeah. Then I had to, they had to buy it back from me, the pawn shop. Yeah. So as a consolation prize, he just gave me that little that, Walter Target that 22 that, that had a couple things wrong with it. And he yeah. said, you could just have this. So I, I sent it in to, I contacted Walter and I was like, hey, I got this 22. It's got a, it's missing a firing pin and uh, the magazine would kind of pop out a little too easy. Okay. So if you bumped it, it might pop out. Okay. So they uh, they said, well, this one's not, you know, in production anymore. Well, you sent it back to Yeah, them. I sent it back to yeah. them, and they're like, oh, it's going to cost about 110 bucks to fix it. To, and I'm like, okay. I, I was hoping to get it fixed for free, you know, like sure. some of the other companies, like Smith & Wesson you and would, Ruger. And, yeah, most companies, yeah. Yeah. They so just take care of That them. was a little bit of a bummer, right? Right. And then... As I was driving down to shoot, then they called, and they they said, "Hey, uh, that gun's unfixable. The, whatever parts it needed, whatever it needed, out they, of production, or, yeah. or was it a, something with the the frame, the serialized part was broken, or something, something. like that? Yeah, maybe it was the magazine release or something. Yeah, it's part of the part of the frame. Yeah, yeah." Anyways, they they said they couldn't fix it, but they were offering the, their consolation prize, which was <laughs> moving on down the ladder. I know, it's just like, <laughs> one, that's why this is the the saga. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you, you went from a super cool, very rare revolver, revolver. to no. a goofy, spacey looking twenty two. That was still pretty revolver. unique. It was very unique for and sure. And now I have plain Jane. <laughs> This is a, a Walther P22Q, and at least they gave me the nickel one. Yeah. So it has like a... It's a nice looking gun. That that slide is is nice looking on it. It's, it, it does. It's a it looks... a nickel boron slide. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice little tiny 22 semi-auto pistol. Yeah. And it is the newer model, the P22... The, the Q. Q. So hopefully they fixed their reliability Let's issues it. with it. Yeah. But I was glad that they gave me the nickel one because, you know, yeah. trading a, a unique gun for a See, and that's, cookie cutter is kind of... After after hearing your story about that gun and everything, then I was like, well, that would be kind of cool to have if you can't have them anymore. <laughs> yeah, like if you can't get them, you, you can't know, pick them or anything. It, it was goofy and it was, you know, yeah, but... Uh, it was more exciting than a P-22. Yeah. 
So that's a little disappointing. Yeah, so at least this one has the nickel slide yeah. and the nickel boron coated, it looks like, and it feels mm -hmm. like it's nice and smooth and sleek. It is. I like that part yeah. about it. And it comes with a threaded barrel, so yeah. um, hopefully, you yeah. know, it that may, is... Uh, may or may not be better than the other P22s. <laughs> yeah, so that is... And, and here's what I'm thinking, right? Mm -hmm. If I am cutting back, I have to cut back like three or four guns, right? Yeah. That's, to, to meet my net yeah. net six. That's, this that's is, the first one on the chopping block. This is probably one of the first to go on the chopping block. Yeah. So I am thinking that, uh, oh, as a reminder, we have there's still time because you still have how many days till the end of the month? It's seven days, I think. Okay, so you got about Monday. a week Next or, Monday is or so the 31st. to do the tacos 10 q-tip challenge to get entered into the the giveaway the, drawing. the yeah. drawing giveaway and let me tell you odds are good really good right now i think it's <laughs> currently it's one in four but i have some other youtube buddies who are like i'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it i just <laughs> I, I just gotta get to the range and do it so yeah. maybe it'll be one in four chances or one in five but it's still like your odds are really good yes and there's some good prizes in there yeah there are. Yeah. So this, maybe this will, I mentioned a mystery prize. Yeah. Perhaps this could be an option for the mystery prize. We'll see. Well, now it's not a mystery. Well, I said perhaps. Perhaps. Maybe. I have a, I have a friend who might want to buy this. So yeah. Depends on if he buys it or not. But the mystery prize will remain a mystery. Yeah. Until someone picks it. All right. So yeah, go ahead and get out and shoot your 10 Q-tips. So I, I did stop by NOE. Again, there's and, still and molds again, that you don't again. have. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I picked up a pretty unique one. This one, when Al was show, he he basically handed me a. They were fresh off the mill or whatever. Yeah. And he had the first cast, and uh -huh. he handed me one. He's like, "Hey, check this out." And it is a 45 caliber projectile. Okay. That weighs 110 grains. Okay. And it is a hollow base. Oh. So, that what's interesting is... about that, or what the purpose would be, like, immediately I knew what I would use Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think, what would you do with that? Yeah, most people, it, it would be kind of just for target plinking, <laughs> like if you're really low on your lead. It and looks like a, tw or a 45 caliber air gun slug. Yeah, <laughs> you could actually use it for that. Yeah. So, and the hollow base would actually work really good That's for the That's kind of what I'm gun. thinking. Yeah. But for me, I, I'm looking for, or I saw it and I was thinking, oh, dueling tree duels with my identical 45 Colt. Oh, guns. there you go. Yeah, that's one of the difficulties is getting a load that has a low enough energy so that it, it well, you want it, it doesn't, high enough it, that it flips the paddle. But not all of them. <laughs> but doesn't flip the paddle and then the shock of that flips more paddles and then it flips back. Yeah. Which I've had that problem oh, yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. So this seems like this would be kind of ideal. Yeah. Because it has a, it's a wide 45 cal projectile uh -huh. and weighing about 110 grains. And you could just, you could adjust the velocity. To, yeah. I mean, uh, it's not going to be a screaming bullet, right? Right. You don't want to. But uh, I had one one guy questioning, like, what advantage does the hollow base give? Yeah. And so I, I was telling him, because of the light bullet, the hollow base allows you to still have more bearing surface to engage the rifling. So okay. it's not just this little so it's thin... Just, it's a way to lighten the bullet, but still, but still give keep it, it, it keep it stable. And yes, everything. and then the hollow base actually expands to seal off the gases sure. and engage the, the rifling properly. So uh, okay. I'm thinking these coated with some, you know, a clear powder coat and mm -hmm. then just load up a ton of them for duels for on the... duels? Yeah, I think that would be just a hoot. So I just got to figure out some load data for this. And I got to get a pile of them cast up. Yeah. This one is a cool mold and it is in stock. Oh. So it's the... It amazes me that he's still coming up with, with new, new stuff. New <laughs> models, new bullet shapes and yeah. designs. And usually what happens is some guy will find something or have a specific need and they call him up and they're like, hey, I need this. I need it to do this. Yeah. And then he'll think about it. And if it's... Sometimes he'll just make it to help out the guy. But right. 
a lot of times he'll think, okay, what are the other purposes people could use this for? Yeah. And is, then if it's... Am I going to sell one of these or am I going to sell a couple hundred of these? Yeah. It's, sure. So anyways, that one, that model is the 453-110-FN-CG3. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I picked up this other one because we were talking about casting powder coating and then also about AR-10s and, and whatnot. Okay. And so I've been kind of looking for... I want to get a cast bullet load in an AR-10. I don't need it to be fast, right? Okay. I just want it as like fodder for like, you know, kind of like blasting fodder. Sure. And so my qual the qualifications are I need a load that shoots a cast bullet, it cycles fine, and it's I don't need crazy accuracy. Like, I don't know, two and a half, three inches at 100 yards would sure. be like totally fine. Okay. You know? Because I have that AR-10 pistol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. And then I have a couple other AR-10s that I just want to, I want to be able to shoot them more often. Yeah. And, you know, shoot at steel targets without, you know, damaging the steel targets. So yeah. maybe shoot at closer distances okay. without damaging. So what's this one doing? So this one, and I don't know if this one will be great for that or not, but okay. this one is called the HTC-308-165-RN. And this one is what he called his SAMI bullet. Okay. And basically what he did is he looked at the SAMI cartridge uh, specs uh -huh. for the chambers. And then he designed a bullet to fit the, the chamber with a grooveless bullet that you powder coat or use high-tech coating. Hmm. And so by filling up the chamber more properly, then you usually get better accuracy. Okay. And... You know, hmm. so I don't know if this will be that. Yeah. But you know, if it casts out about to 165, we'll see if I can get a, a load that slows it down a little bit, maybe like 2,000, 2,200 feet per second. I was also thinking about doing a heavy one going about 2,000 feet per second with the 225 grain taco bullet, like the 300 blackout. Uh huh. And with the 10 twist barrel, I believe it should stabilize. Okay. So. A couple things I'm trying to work on at the same time. I still got those 10 millimeter bullets that I, I cast up. You saw uh -huh. those, a pile of blue yeah. bullets, hollow points, yeah. short stubby ones. Uh -huh. And so I need to, I need to uh, get the tool head swapped to 40 and 10 uh -huh. on the Dillon press and then just start cranking just crank out some. But I need to do some testing on load, load development and testing right. to see before, before I crank out a ton yeah. of them and have something that now doesn't I have 3,000 rounds. Is 10 millimeter that doesn't do what I want it to. <laughs> yeah. I, and I have been playing with some 125 grain jacketed loads for the 300 blackout and using a Midwest powder. And it's like, I think it's called, uh, it's a 325. Okay. And I think that behaves similar to Lil Gun. And so I got these 125. Oh man, I can't remember the velocity off the top of my head. It was over 2000 feet per second. Wow. So for a, 300 blackout pistol going about that fast that's that's pretty good yeah so, yeah okay anyways done that and more but sure we'll end there okay should we jump into a news story yes what do you got self-defense in the news self-defense in the news in a normally quiet southeast houston neighborhood around midnight on april 12th an elderly woman was at home alone when she heard a knock on her door the person knocking was a male dressed in scrubs pretending to be a healthcare worker. Oh, jeez. The 65... They're getting creative now. Yeah. The 65-year-old homeowner refused to open the door and called her son, who fortunately lived nearby, just after the invader abandoned his ruse and busted through the front door. The oh, woman's geez. son arrived, shot him, and ultimately killed him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the armed citizen was not expected to face charges. So, what would have happened if she didn't have... What if that was a 911 call instead of a call to her son that was probably a few houses away? Yeah. You know what I mean? It could have been bad. It could really have been bad. way bad. Yeah, the 911 would come... The police would come to clean up the mess. Kind of like yep. Officer John was saying. Yep. That's it was like, they come after the crime's done. Yeah. We're there just to... To, yeah, make a report and clean up the mess. Yeah. You know, and unfortunately, that's... They can't be everywhere 
all the time. And the, the opportunities for them to, you know, roll up on something in process is pretty uncommon compared to cleaning, cleaning up. up the yeah. aftermath. But yeah. Anyway. It's, it's interesting. I, I'm glad that the son was able to get there in time. Yeah. Because he sounds like the guy had just broken in the door. Yeah. And then he, son ran in and shot the, shot the guy. Yeah. But I, I wonder if the woman has a firearm. Maybe. Because... Yeah, maybe she was holed up in a back bedroom or something and had her own own gun just waiting. In the I case. would hope so. Yeah. And that, that goes to show, like, your front door is <laughs> yeah. not that yeah. great. Like, people yeah. can kick that in pretty easy. Yeah, depending on, on, depending on the guy and, and, and uh, how you're set up. But, yeah. I've seen some videos of these, like, skinny, weakling guys, like, trying... To like they run into a door with uh-huh. their shoulder trying to knock it over and uh-huh. they just fall on the ground. Yeah. So I Break don't know. Their shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> depends on uh depends on the guy trying to kick kick the door down. Right. But, uh yeah, it's it's always best if you yourself are armed. So yeah, you, you know, and, even if you call your son or whoever to help, you can still take care of yourself even right. if they can't get there in time. You know, and she had the presence of mind to not open the door in the first place. That is I find that to be kind of the most... That probably saved her life. Yeah. Most people will open the door. Yeah. I get after my wife all the time because she yeah. opens the door to these like door-to-door salesmen. Yeah. I'm like, don't open the door. You don't owe it to anybody to open that door. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be rude. Well, yeah. don't worry about being rude. <laughs> yeah. And there were, you know, I think we talked about it like... I don't know, a year or two ago in a, on a podcast episode of there were, there were a bunch of these door-to-door salesmen selling cleaning products uh-huh. or something. And they ended up being like, I think they would stick their foot in the door so you couldn't close the door. We had a situation just like that in our neighbor on our street. And it was like just super pushy and rude to my wife. And she got rid of him. By the time he got to the end of the street, word had already spread and one of the guys at the end of the street called the police and they came in, you know, ended up that the guy had warrants and they arrested him. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so you never know. I yeah. mean, this guy had scrubs on, so, yeah. you know, initially you think, oh, it's a doctor or a nurse or something. Yeah. Some, someone. Nobody in scrubs would do something bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's awesome that she did not open the door. Yeah. Yeah, she had and she had she had an awesome son who could yeah. get there quick. Yep. Yeah. So very cool. All right. Okay. Last time we promised a wild story, and this one qualifies for a misfire award. Yes. And now it's time for the misfire award. Dope. For our misfire award, we have two winners. <laughs> Okay. I think there were more than two. If, if, if you look at this two, story. Two carloads of winners. Uh, yes, that's probably and more. And two accurate. losers. Yeah. 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 Okay, but that we'll, works. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll explain it. Last Saturday evening, William Joseph Hale, 35, and Frank Gilliard, Allison, 43, were both driving northbound on Highway 1 just outside Jacksonville. Families in tow. That means they had all their families in the, or their family members in the car, spouses and children. And... When they began to engage in what one witness described as a cat and mouse game of one-upsmanship, police said that Hale, who drove a black Dodge truck, and Allison, who drove a Nissan Murano, I have no idea what that is. It's a it's like a, a little, smaller SUV, kind of like a little crossover SUV yeah, type yeah. vehicle. Began speeding and driving recklessly occasionally brake checking one another and otherwise operating their vehicles in a way that endangered themselves and others. Now here's something that's interesting about this, like road rage. Uh Road rage can always stop as long as you stop. Yeah. Like if it takes two, it takes two, Mm -hmm. you know, someone could do something really rude, but how you respond is if that event keeps going or it stops. Yeah. You know, it can stop with you. Yeah. At some point during the game, air quotes, (laughs) 
Hale and the truck began to signal to the Nissan to pull over, witnesses said. In response, Jessica Allison, wife of Frank, reportedly rolled down the passenger window of the Nissan to give the truck the middle finger. So At, the whole family's yeah, involved. It's like a, it's family, a family affair. affair. That's lovely. <laughs> At which point, someone in the truck allegedly seized the opportunity and threw a water bottle at or into the Nissan. Oh. So they took so advantage of the roll Junior in the back down. seat. I'm going to, yeah, wax, wax the middle finger with a water bottle. Oh, my goodness. This is awesome. That's when the situation really escalated, reports suggest. Frank Allison then grabbed his Sig Sauer 45 caliber automatic handgun and fired one shot at the other truck before driving away at a high rate of speed said Nassau County Sheriff Bill Leeper. The shot entered one of the rear doors of the truck and reportedly struck Hale's five-year-old daughter in the leg. Oh, nice. So so uh, let's get this straight. So he's the, the, the shooter's in the Nissan, right? And the wife in the Nissan rolls down the window and gives him the finger, which makes me think that the truck was on her side of the car, right? Wouldn't that be logical? Pro- probably. The driver of the Nissan then fires a shot into the truck after they throw a water bottle, which means he's reaching across his wife to fire a shot through her open window into the truck. The the thing I don't right? get is, you know, obviously they weren't thinking. It was all no. the motion. But what were they thinking would be the best, like, what good could come out of shooting into the truck into the truck no you're either going to hit someone it was all ego yeah it's it's this whole thing is all ego yeah they he probably you know when he when the cops came i feared for my life yeah like oh really when you flip the guy off yeah yeah Uh and uh, yeah that it doesn't work that way you can't escalate to the point where you fear for your life now you yeah now i have to defend myself yeah and it wasn't a situation where he was defending his life so he shoots the the truck the truck and hits hits a five-year-old five-year-old girl in in the leg okay maybe she was the one that threw the water bottle though maybe so (laughs) once hale realized that his sippy cup yeah. She threw her sippy cup at him. <laughs> no throwing sippy cups. <laughs> Once Hale realized that his daughter had been shot, he allegedly returned fire, shooting everything, this is quotes, everything that was in the magazine of his Glock 43 9mm semi-automatic handgun. Good thing it was a Glock 43, so he only had seven shots. <laughs> yeah. Unless he, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't make a double stack for that nope. one. Nope. No, nope. unless it was a forty-three X. Yes, and then and then they could have had shield 15. arms. Yeah, <laughs> potentially. Yeah, approximately seven or eight rounds. Police yeah. said he admitted. Police said, "Okay, so what did you think would?" I emptied my magazine again into it, another. Uh, mo- and there's other people there's around other, on the road. I'm sure other people, and there's there's kids in the back of the yeah of the like. Are you thinking it's a good idea to it, shoot and kill a kid? Like, yeah. This that's where I, I it boggles my mind. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Escalation, escalation, escalation. Yep. Yeah, and uh, police said that at least three of those rounds hit the Nissan. So I interpret that as five rounds did not. Yeah. And got sprayed. And who knows where they? Where? Were. Yeah. Who knows where? And one of them struck Allison's fourteen-year-old daughter in the back, causing a lung collapse. Oh gosh. This is just... So, it sounds like the Nissan is ahead of him then. Or I guess it could have been behind. I, I, I don't know. They can, it yeah. sounds like they're just probably Idiots. going crazy. And The drivers then reportedly spotted a police cruiser pulled over and began fighting one another. And deputies had to separate them before eventually placing them both under arrest. Both wives had also reportedly spoken to 911 operators during the incident. Yeah, I'm sure they reported it very one-sided. Uh-huh. This guy just shot. Yeah. They're shooting They're at shooting us. They're shooting at us. <laughs> I don't know why. He just shot my daughter. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, at least one, but likely both girls were treated at UF 
Health Downtown Hospital for injuries that were not considered life-threatening. A collapsed lung is uh, pretty serious. It's pretty serious. It's not... Getting shot in the back in a collapsed lung. Not life-threatening, but it, it could escalate into yeah. something fairly bad. Depending on how close you are to the hospital, too. Right. Thankfully, no one was killed in this incident, he continued, but it could have been or could have very easily turned out that way because two people were acting stupid and let their tempers get the best of them. There were more than two people acting stupid. Yes. But they were... Including... There were two who the excelled The kid who threw the it. sippy. Yeah. <laughs> the sippy cup thrower and the, the middle finger mother. <laughs> yeah. There could have been two dead kids because of two stupid grown men. Both men were booked into the county jail on second degree attempted murder yeah. and released on 150000 bond. So guess what? You guys have now revoked your right to own a gun. Yep. So they can never you're, own a gun again. You're both going to do jail time. Um, that means if you're the, the sole provider for your family, now that's disrupted and yes. the wives have got to take care of everything and now. if you're not self-employed good luck getting a another job with a you know yeah after serving time and felony uh, you know and yeah and one based out of anger and you know yeah like why would you hire a guy who lost his temper and shot at someone else like oh that I, have makes... a, I have a good friend who is a criminal defense attorney and he would take it because that's what he does yeah. But a lot of what he does, you know, if somebody's if somebody's clearly guilty, okay, in this situation, it, innocent until proven guilty, I get it. It seems pretty clear cut from the information that we've had. So we're going to assume they're both guilty, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> not, not one of them is going to get off on self-defense because all you had to do to avoid the situation was just stop. stop the car or pull off the next exit and get away start driving slow but so a, that they yeah they don't want to drive that slow so they right but a lot of what he does is negotiates the sentence and yeah. stuff like that well and i'm not talking about taking the job like that i'm talking yeah. about why would someone hire somebody right. right that has anger problems enough to like shoot a girl in a leg or in the back well he didn't and was they aiming almost aiming at the girl. Yeah. Okay. But but they could have easily shot someone and hit him in the head and killed them. Yeah. So could have hit somebody in another vehicle. Also, yes. Which, if that would have happened, this would have been way worse than the trouble. Instead of already. a kind of funny story, it would be a very sad, sad. Oh yeah. 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 But it just this is what frustrates me the most about this story is the anti-gun people this is the type of the stuff that they say is going to happen when gun rights are relaxed mm -hmm. and so a situation like this just proves their point yeah it doesn't happen very often the way they but predicted. they can point to this and but say, this is hey, this, this is when they can this. say look look at this this is just going to keep happening if we continue to allow people to buy guns and have ammo and whatever you know Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the, for me, that is the most frustrating part about the story is it affects all of us. Yeah, correct. You know, it, it puts a, it puts a black eye on anybody who's pro-gun. Mm -hmm. How can you, how can you, you get, support You get that? lumped into the same group because you're a gun owner. Yeah. And you must be just like them. That's yeah. why you carry a gun is because you want to hurt people. Because you want to shoot at people who, like, who yeah, make cut you off on the freeway. freeway. Yeah. I have heard that from people. Oh, this is this is going to be terrible. It's just going to be, yeah. Yeah, usually. It's going to be like the it's Wild kinda, West. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, though. Like, when, when, they, when the states approve the, uh, or pass the constitutional carry, yeah. stuff like that, then the, the crime end. just goes down yeah but the anti-gun people this is exactly this is the type of stuff to. that yeah. they say this is what's going to happen it's going to be blood in the streets and people are going to be having shootouts to solve their problems and da, da 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 and thank you you boys for supporting that theory because it doesn't ha happen yeah you know like they predict and 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 then they don't ever say anything afterwards you mm -hmm. know yeah it's not ever oh i, I guess we were wrong it's no, we'll just wait for something bad to happen so that we can capitalize on that and try to prove our point. Correct.
but yeah. All right. So don't do that, guys. Don't no. do that. Have some self-control. Most people um, that I've talked to and that I know, and it was the same with me, is when you start to carry and you just get into it, you all of a sudden have a greater sense of responsibility mm -hmm. and... Responsibility to de-escalate. Yeah. And where there's Because you don't want to kill someone. Right. Where maybe in the past you might have, you know, yelled at somebody or given them the finger or done something. Now it's like I'm carrying and, yeah, I don't think I want to make this any worse. Yep. <laughs> That's... That's the way you sh your mindset should be when you are carrying the the yeah a firearm is a tool for self defense in an extreme situation and a last ditch I have no other options it's not I'm gonna poke the bear until I have to draw my gun mm -hmm. it doesn't work that way that's that's a good way to. To send Poke yourself the bear till he draws his gun so that you could draw your gun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like and what happened in this? It's yeah. exactly what happened, you know. And I kind of, I just assume that everybody's carrying a gun, and that if I'm in a situation similar to that, and I provoke it or escalate it, that that's just where it's going to go, and I don't want to be there, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, I I'm certain the first guy who shot was thinking in his mind, I've got the upper hand because I'm armed and watch this. I will show him, you know, and then it was like, oh yeah, well look what I got. <laughs> it was like it said at the beginning of the story, one upmanship, you yeah. know, I'm better than you and you know, I'll show you. No, I'll show you. <laughs> no, oh, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? The judge is going to show both of you yep. and you're not going to be happy. Show you the door to the jail. Yeah. And and based on what they're driving, I'm guessing they're just kind of middle class working yeah. guys like any of the rest of us. Yeah, and, and how much of a disruption that would be? Not to, anymore. Yeah, it takes your, a split second for your life to change dramatically. Yeah, and now they they've you know bail was set pretty high at yeah. least for a regular dude. 150. I'm surprised they both bailed out at that. Yeah, but but. Yeah, it's and now they're gonna have that big financial hit of oh yeah like lawyers attorneys, fees, attorneys and, and yeah and jail, loss of work loss of work jail time all that stuff yeah so yeah it's unfortunate that they let their emotions control them yep so we have a little bit of time left in our lunchtime episode <laughs> to cover a new segment that Jason wanted to do which is. Where we talk about a new item well, it's, in the industry. It, yes. It, I think it ties in with the news. And maybe this will be something that we, we include with the news periodically. But... Um, and new so just, just so you know, I do not own one of these and neither, I have not bought one. Neither of us have. Yet. And so this isn't, <laughs> this isn't, this isn't a a review or anything like yeah. that this just is kind of heads up and we, yeah. we want to get your thoughts too something something cool that just and i don't know how recently it's been it was released it just caught my attention the other day it's been so, out for a little bit yeah but but uh, ruger has the lc carbine which is the partner to the ruger five seven or 57. Fit, yeah, the ruger 57 they pistol it. yeah which shoots the 5.7 by 28 uh, caliber and it takes the same magazines as it takes the same magazines as the pistol the the grip is the, the same it's a, yeah. an identical grip as the pistol the angle looks the same it's got a looks like it's got a folding stock on it um i have to say it's kind of ugly <laughs> it's <laughs> just boring i i would agree that it's ugly i think it's uh you know you know, with, and I'm not trying to compare it to like the PS90, you know, because that's kind of naturally where you would go. Yeah, it's, it, that, and that's a really unique. It, that is a completely not just the caliber, but the, the gun design. itself is yeah. just. It's a bullpup. This is yeah, not a bullpup. Not a bullpup. It's kind of almost like it's trying to be an AR platform, but it's not because it, it actually feeds into the grip. And yeah, I was gonna say. I mean. Not to knock it or anything, but it, it actually shares a lot of characteristics of like the high point carvings. It it be, does. the way that the the magazine feeds through the grip. Yep, it's and, 
it's much sleeker than yes. the high point. Yes. <laughs> For sure. Uh, looks like it comes with flip up sights, which is which is a cool feature. Suggested retail nine hundred and seventy nine bucks, so street price is Probably maybe like just under eight hundred, yeah, somewhere around Something there. Like that. But if you if you've got the Ruger fifty seven pistol, that's a no brainer. Yeah. It it's not the sexiest carbine out there, but So let's let's talk use case. Okay. What would you use this for? Um shooting bad guys <laughs> <laughs> you would gain you probably gain some decent velocity out of the 57 cartridge yeah you would over the pistol yeah and what's the barrel length probably like 16 and a half or 16 point something. yeah 16 and a quarter yeah, yeah that's that's what i thought but i wanted to i believe check. it's threaded correct yeah everything it is, should be threaded it these is days. threaded yeah there's no reason not to so i mean potentially Assuming that you have a 5.7 handgun, uh-huh. or maybe maybe you don't even have the 5.7 handgun. If you are someone who needs like a really low recoiling yeah. rifle yeah. or carbine, this could probably do that. Yeah. It uh, When you think about it as maybe like a farm gun for like shooting... It, it would be like a decent ground farm squirrels. It would, I think it would do okay at that. Yeah. But then... It's I expensive would, to pull the trigger. I would say 5.7 ammo versus 17 HMR. Yeah. I'd, I'd probably reach for the 17 HMR. Right. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I, it seems like it doesn't... For me, it has like zero use cases. Yeah. I have stuff that does think it does it better... Yeah, in or all at least, areas, or at least cheaper, if not better else. or cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I just was intrigued that because uh, when Ruger released the the fifty seven pistol, mm-hmm. I was like, cool. That that was I was excited about that because I really don't like the FN five seven just from a looks and ergonomics perspective, not from a functional perspective. Um, and the, the 57 solved all those issues that I had. Yeah. You know. So here's a question. But that was the natural progression. If you were to win a combo, you had the choice of the PS90 and the 57 or the Ruger 57 and, and this, this, yeah, LC carbine. What would you get? I would probably go with the FNs and and keep the carbine and get rid of the pistol. If you could, you had to keep. It it had, had to keep them. Yeah, you had to keep it as a pair. You couldn't just because I, oh. I would do that too. Yeah, <laughs> because the PS90 is like a, it's a cool unique. Gun. It is. I would I would probably still go with the FNs just because that PS90 is such a unique firearm yeah. and and it's so well done. And we know? know how much Carl likes it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That that matters. So so from from that, you know, I I would probably it, it's that much cooler that it it wins by itself. Yeah. I would say man, I I really don't like that the the 57 the, the five handgun. It just, I don't either. It feels like a high point kind of like kind a, a of. molded it's, molded I, uh, uh, slide. And yeah, like, I don't like the polymer that FN uses. It, I, it's weird to say, but it just feels cheap to me. It doesn't feel when you pick it up. It doesn't feel solid and quality like like the Ruger fifty seven does. Mm-hmm. Um, and and comparing even their the Ruger fifty seven feels good and it's machined well. Yes. Yeah. So it's hard to get because the it the handgun is hand. so much better of the yeah. Ruger. Yeah. But then their their carbine, it's not that it's a bad gun, it's just nothing special about yeah. it. Yeah. It this the same crew that designed that is not the same crew that worked on the new Marlins. <laughs> yeah. But I'm I don't know. What what would you do differently? I honestly, because they're going after the the FN market. They have to mm-hmm. be. There's no other reason to be dabbling in that caliber and going with that type of thing because that's where that they have the corner on that market. I know there's other guns that shoot that caliber. Yeah. But when you think about that that caliber, that's immediately what you think of is the FNs. Yep. And so for me, I would have been. I would. I'm not saying that they necessarily needed to go with a bullpup to compete with it. But just something different. Something. Something more 
advanced looking, yeah. more spacey, futuristic looking. And and maybe there's a lot of people out there who will buy this because it shoots the caliber they want and it and doesn't look all weird and spacey. There, there could be. There could be. But to me, there just wasn't very much thought or effort put into the aesthetics of that gun. It was like, it hey, very... we, we, need to, we need to do this. We've got the pistol. We need the carbine. I need it next month. Let's go. Yeah, it looks very <laughs> vanilla. Very vanilla. Yeah. So. And even even the the folding stock on it just looks kind of clunky. It yeah, just, it kind of does. It's not, but it, I, I believe, that, I think it has a cheek riser. Which would be nice. That's nice. And and this that one advantage that this has over the PS90 is the optics mounting. Yeah. And so you could actually throw a scope on this. Yeah. And you could mount it closer to the bore axis. Yeah. Then very the much PS90. So. That was when when I had mine. I I've, I think I've owned like three PS90s. You just can't like, keep them. <laughs> I, they, I can't keep them because for one, cost of ammo. Yeah. And the weirdness of reloading it. Yeah. It's like. It's a tricky caliber to reload. It's, it's got a coated brass case. Yeah. And so it just makes it weird. Yeah. But it is possible. But yeah. the the optics mounting it's is really high. so high. It's like five inches or something. Yeah. It's like crazy. It's kind of... And so trying to sight it in is very tricky because you're like, what distance do I sight this in at? Yeah, because it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Whereas something with a lower bore axis... Because if it's it close, it's going to shoot five back. inches low. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you sight it in at, say, like 100 yards or something. Right. I think we figured out a 50 yards was a decent compromise. Yeah. And so we, we sighted it in at 50 yards, and you could still hit some far targets. Right. But the holdovers, you, you just have to be aware of. You have yeah. to shoot it enough so that you are aware of holdovers and how much it right. throws off. Because you'll aim at something close, and you'll be like, oh, this gun's so accurate. And it, it is, is accurate. But you, you, you hit like understand. five inches below or four yeah. inches below. And yeah. You're like, okay, so if I'm aiming at this distance, distance, I have to aim high. I have to aim low at this distance. Anyways, yeah. it's it's like that with every gun, but you don't notice it as much when you have optics mounted closer to the bore axis. Right. Yep. So. Yep. So anyway, that's uh, that's the new Ruger LC carbine. Um, I'd be interested in in our listeners. If any think. of you have one, yeah, I would love. Please to. write in and give us feedback. Yeah, what, what do you, you what do you think? What do you love? What do you hate? You have to say both. I'm like, I'm guessing that I mean it's going to be a shooter. It's going to run great. It's gonna it's gonna feel. It probably decent. shoots nice and accurate. Yeah, lightweight. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the weight of it. You know, actually, it probably has the weight. Let's see, five point nine pounds. So that's that's. Fairly lightweight for yeah. a carbine, but anyway. Yeah, let us know what what you what you like what about you it, what about you don't it. like about it. Yeah, but it's just the the idea is awesome. I feel like they could have executed it in a different way that just would have drawn more better. attention. Yeah, you know. But anyway, that's All what right. we got for you this week. Thanks for listening and subscribing and sharing, and sharing with your with friends. Your, friends. <laughs> your friend. Your friend. <laughs> friend. Yeah. Some yeah. of these people only have one friend. Well, if they're listening to this podcast, there's something probably wrong with them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Stay safe. Have fun. Yep. Yeah.